Homage to him, the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Fully Enlightened One. Shadu, shadu, shadu. Okay, we have something different in store for you tonight. And actually, this is sort of, I've been poked many times by many sets of parents across the years, some 20 years. Every year, you know, at the center, a couple parents will, you know, come and say, what do we do with our young children? And then they talk to me online all the time about this. Well, I found this book. This is a tiny little book. This is 12 pages long. Okay. It's a little pamphlet and it was put together by uh, the, I'm going to take you through the pamphlet. And this is a very nice thing to do with children. And it's just what Bonte has explained to me about it. And uh, it's a little slightly, a little bit different. I think the way it talks about it, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember right, it's a little bit different, but that can be changed. It's not, not any problem, but, but uh, this has been written by a man, uh, Gregory Kramer from Portland, Oregon. And um, this has been put together by him a long time back. I was looking through it and I'll show the book to you. And this is a pamphlet. We sent it out to you. It's PDF and um, Budanet is taking care of a collection of these, uh, has collected these pamphlets and helped to develop them over the years. I'm also going to read something to you before I start. Um, this is called the uh, Kanda Paritam. It's an extraction. It's called the safeguard of the constituent groups. And this, um, this is one of the chants that we have in our chanting book. I would not let them build a chanting book without putting this in, which is not usually found in chanting books, because we were living in the forest and so were many other critters living in the forest. So it's just a really good idea for you before you go to sleep each night to say the following, and I'll do it in English for you. I am friendly with those without feet. With those with two feet, I am friendly. I am friendly with those with four feet, with those with many feet. I am friendly. May the one without feet not hurt me. May the one with two feet not hurt me. May the one with four feet not hurt me. May the one with many feet not hurt me. May all beings, all living creatures, all who are born in their entirety, may all see prosperity, may nothing bad ever come to any. And I used to say that every night before I fell asleep at Damasuka Meditation Center, because living in the forest, you never know who's in the sink or under the sink or under your bed <laughs> or in between where you're sleeping. And when you have to walk to the bathroom, what's gonna be there? And when you get really afraid of stuff, your vibrations, the frequency that follows you isn't very good. And that's when little things and bigger things think it's okay to come bother you. So doing this is a, is a safeguard. It's one of the safeguard chants that was we put in our chanting book. And I used to teach it to some of the kids when I was working with them in a couple different locations. And um, in, in America, we visited some places and I taught it to some children. They really liked it and we gave it to them just this page. So if you want a copy of it, I'll try to figure out how I can scan this or something and send it to Bonte. Maybe he can, or maybe I can take the one page out of the chanting book and make it a single document and send it to you so people can get it. And it was included in our chanting book. And right now I was looking at our chanting book this week because I was thinking, you know, we really need to print this book too. We need to print this up for Asia. And it's in the Pali for the chanting. It's in the uh, in Pali and it was done by, uh, originally it was my idea. And then 
I went through it with English and then Bhante Kusala came to our center and he's a Pali scholar. So he did the Pali in it and he added a few other ones. But our, our chanting book is pretty simple and it's like about 20 pages long. So anybody who likes chanting and wants to get involved, um, and this is something you would never find Bhante creating because he's not a monk that really gets into chanting. <laughs> but I really wanted to have some chanting and that's how it started this whole thing. And we ended up with a good chanting book and now they've started to integrate that into the center finally. And I ended up formatting it. And then, um, then um, David took care of, uh, I think it was David took care of printing at that time. So that's the story about that. So let's go and take a look at this on the screen. We're gonna get this up, okay. And this is the little this is a little booklet. It's called Seeding the Heart. Loving Kindness Practice with Children by Gregory Kramer. It's a Buddha Net booklet, Buddha Dharma Education Association. And also, Bhante, you know, I was thinking, I'm just going to throw this out there, that we could try and call this phone number to see if the in, Inward Journey book publishing is still operational we could check with them um, okay. to, see, to see if they're still functioning whether they could help us with printing it or something or they would know somebody in india you okay. know so that 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 number is there's a malaysia number also yeah that, yeah that's a malaysia number okay so that's when you come down here this was um this booklet and all these other booklets were put by permission onto a pen drive in this to come around and try to circulate in India more by one of the students that was a Pali scholar and decided to do this as part of his project. So the practice of loving kindness or metta can be done in one of two ways, either an intensive prolonged meditation to develop deep states of concentration. That's what's a little different with us. We, we don't get so heavily concentrated and use it in daily life. That's the same. At any time that one meets up with people or animals and or thinks about them in your mind, the systemic systematic practice of loving kindness for deep concentration as it is practiced in various meditation centers has been discussed in detail by teachers like the late Venerable Mahasi Sayadaw and Venerable Sujiva. Now, the only thing about that is that they, they would have discussed it with kind of a, a little bit harder, a little bit harder practice than we're doing. It's, it's not quite as light. To, to learn about the radiating of metta to all beings with children, we have to tap into the store of knowledge that's accumulated by lay people and parents. It must be uh, knowledge which has grown out of years of living and loving with the children and young adults. Gregory Kramer, the father of three boys, shows us in his short essay with what subtle but precise adjustments in the standard practice of loving kindness that he was able to anchor it into the lives of his children. There are three aspects in Mr. Kramer's meta practice with his sons, which seem to me particularly important for his success. Parents, should know themselves how meta feels, what it feels like, and be in the habit of radiating it to their children and all beings. The second point is children should never be coerced into sending wishes of well being to themselves or others. They should want to do it with you naturally. It's important. Parents, on the third point, parents should trust their intuitive understanding of their children and be flexible enough to adjust the method to the age and the unique personalities of the kids. There are many wonderful ways to radiate loving kindness with children and young adults. I hope that this essay will encourage parents to share their own experiences, their successes, obstacles in their family meta practice. 
and we would like to thank Gregory Kramer for his cooperation to publish this book. And thanks also to Sandy Eastoke and the North Atlantic Books for the permission to reprint this text. One has to learn to live with oneself, to be a friend with oneself, to be at peace with oneself, to somehow learn to be happy with oneself. Because wherever you go, you take you with you. And that's Ajahn Brahmavanso. I believe the fruits of loving kindness meditation as advocated by Gregory Kramer are born from his personal experience will help us and our children, for those of us with children, achieve the goals set out above by the venerable as necessary to find peace here and now. And this is CTTO. He's working with Budanet in the development of it. Ever since my first child, this is what Gregory's saying now, was just about old enough to understand speech. I have practiced loving kindness meditation with him at bedtime every evening. I've done the same with my other two children. It's been about 16 years now. I would be happy to pass along some of what I've learned. Loving kindness is a meditation practice taught by the Buddha to develop the mental habit of selfless or altruistic love. By arousing within ourselves feelings of good will towards ourselves, those near to us and all beings, we make this likely that these feelings will arise rather than other less desirable feelings. Hatred cannot coexist with loving kindness. It dissipates and is not replenished if we supplant thoughts rooted in anger with thoughts rooted in love. So that's the part where I'm always saying to you guys, whenever you let something go, you have to replace it. So letting things go during a retreat and then leaving the retreat and not continuing to let them go all the time and having to try to let them go all the time is difficult. And so things bite back that were biting you in the retreat and bothering you. So that's why this sort of training of right after the way we're showing you the first two steps of your practice, this two parts of recognizing and releasing is purifying your mind, but you are also then relaxing and smiling and coming back, which is replacing that with something else. This is what's cool when we're working with loving kindness. Loving kindness makes the mind more pliable. It counteracts the judgments that arise as we become more perceptive about ourselves and others and brings us beyond our selfishness. This outward movement is very important to balance the inner focus of meditation practice. The benefits of loving kindness practice extend far beyond those who meditate. It offers to all the opportunity to kind selflessness, joy, adaptability, and expansiveness. It is a truly universal practice, and it need not be associated with any particular religious concept. I've always given my three sons a choice. Most evenings, they clearly want to do this. If, however, one of them is cranky or upset, I'll say, would you like to do loving kindness tonight? And if the answer is no, then I'll say, okay, honey. 
give him a kiss through the blanket if necessary and say good night. So they know it is for them. If they see it is okay with me not to do it, it won't hurt my feelings. Then it is alive and it's part of their lives. It prevents it from becoming a ritual with little meaning. Feeling good about doing this meditation is what brings it into our lives. They associate their own happiness and peace with a meditation that wishes happiness and peace for our, themselves and others. It also feels good that the practice has become part of the evening, just as the story and my lying down with them. It is a special time of attention, gentleness, fantasy, mind opening, and familial love. It tells me something about how this practice feels to them when following a tense time, such as an argument, they still want me to practice loving kindness with them. At times like these, the pleasant and wholesome associations of loving kindness meditation are of unique value. I long expected the day to arrive when my eldest son, who is now 18, would not want to practice anymore. Even as I expected this, he and I benefited from the connection we felt at bedtime. And of course, through many other times. The wedge of teenagerdom and his growing independence was a challenge at times. But this special connection was very strong. I am now finding a similar connection with our middle, middle child as he enters his teenage years. What finally did happen as the eldest reached about 16 years of age was I became busier at bedtime with his two brothers and he simply became less insistent on my presence for the practice. Every now and then I ask him if he still practices loving kindness on his own and am pleased to find that he does. Now, I have to point out, this can all take a lot of time. The stories usually made up rather than read, the loving kindness meditation and be with time can add up to 20 or 30 minutes. With children in separate rooms, this can add up to an hour each night. And as wonderful as it can be, sometimes I can't do it. And it's good to know that even a five minute practice has great value for you. Interestingly, when I'm busy, the boys still request a quick loving kindness, even before a story or be with time. When I have to be away, they do just fine without me. Here is how we do the loving kindness practice. I ask them to close their eyes and to relax. I suggest that they pay attention to their bodies, noticing the sensation of lying down. And then they think along with me as I say the following. First, send loving kindness to yourself. Really love yourself. Want yourself to be happy. Think. I love myself. 
May I be free from anger. May I be free from sadness. May I be free from pain. I really want to be free from pain. May I be free from difficulties. May I be free from all suffering. May I be healthy. May my body be healthy and strong. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I know the joy of generosity and love. May I be happy. May I really be happy. May I be at peace. I spread this loving kindness out. I send love to dad and mom. May mom and dad be free from difficulties. May they be free from pain and sadness. May they be free from attachment, free from anger and ill will. May they be free from all suffering. May mom and dad be healthy and happy, completely healthy and happy. May they be at peace. I send loving kindness to both my brothers. May they be free from sadness and anger. May they be free from sickness. May they be free from all suffering. May they be happy and free. Free from suffering. Free from difficulties. May they be well and happy. May they be at peace. I send loving kindness to my teachers and the kids at school, even the ones I don't know. May all of them be free from sorrow and suffering. May they be free from anger and difficulties. May they be happy free from all difficulties and sadness. May they be well and happy. May they be at peace. I send love now to all the people. I don't know, everywhere. On the earth, may all beings on the planet be free from suffering. May they be free from pain, grief, and despair. May they be happy, truly happy. May they be at peace. May all beings in the universe be free from suffering. May all beings in all universes everywhere be free from suffering. May they be well and happy. May they be at peace. May all kinds in all directions be happy at peace. Above and below, near and far, high and low, all types of beings, the humans and non-humans, seen and unseen, all the animals, birds and fishes, all beings and creatures, with no exceptions. May they all be happy. May they be free. I open my heart and accept the loving kindness of every being and creature in return. I let that love into my heart and I share the benefits of this meditation with everyone. May all beings be well and happy. May all beings be well and happy. May all beings be well and happy. May there be peace. May there be peace. May there be peace. 
following the meditation, each child gets a kiss and an I love you. I lie there briefly with them and then I leave. This practice is slightly different from the one I do with my adult meditation students. There are nuances that I adjust with age and mood to make the meditation something that kids can relate to directly and emotionally. As they mature and their world grows, the scope of meditation can grow and still be congruent with that world. By beginning with some instructions, rather than the practice itself, I'm setting the stage and the mood. This creates a transition from listening to stories to focusing on their feelings and then growing those feelings towards love. Another adjustment is that each person, group, or region towards whom the loving kindness is being sent has slightly different words. I do not want this practice to become a rote. By avoiding repetition, we help the meditation stay alive and relevant. And then we grow the feelings of love in the most fertile soil. Logically, the closest and most loved people or the animals or the plants. The children themselves get the most attention based on the simple fact that we all want to be free from pain and difficulties. When we know how that feels for ourselves, we can, with identification and understanding, spread that feeling to others. After all, they are just like us and must always want to be free from pain, discomfort, and other sufferings. We extend loving kindness towards ourselves, towards someone we love a great deal, dad and mom, towards others we love, our brothers, family, and then towards those we like, our friends at school, the neutrals, or at least feel neutral towards teachers and other kids. And then towards all beings. With adults, the practice goes from oneself to a loved one, then to a family member, then to a neutral one, then one towards whom one may feel angry, and then on out geographically. With children, we slowly grow the world. We are not pushing the river. We need to remember that when they are ready, we extend the loving kindness towards people they feel some agitation towards. In even the youngest child, I will occasionally add people that he may feel angry towards. With my 13 year old, we do so often, though he seems to feel little agitation towards others. There is an element of improvisation in the way I conduct the practice. If I feel the kids are in a particularly loving place, then I may focus more on sending love to their teachers. May they really be free from difficulties and suffering. This would help them to see their teachers as regular humans with pain with lives outside the classroom, not beyond error and emotion. I may also focus extra loving kindness on someone in need, such as an ill grandmother. The child can then be helped to see that when there is a need, you step outside yourself and give extra. 
In spreading the loving kindness geographically, I try to walk the line between it becoming a mental exercise. Where is that town? Where is that continent? And being so general as not to invoke feelings of expansiveness. Oh, we're at that spreading thing that I don't really understand. Well, I'll just lie here. Hmm. This grows in sophistication with age and understanding. But one must be careful not to turn it into a geography lesson. Although a little intrigue doesn't hurt, I send loving kindness across all of Asia and Africa and Australia, across all the oceans to all the creatures in the sea. The feeling of expansiveness is paramount here from me to them, to all on earth, to all in the universe, to all in all directions, with no exceptions. And this helps the heart grow and soften. It takes children or us out of themselves, but in a gentle way. Questions come up with the kids. They may not come up with adults like the time my youngest wanted to send loving kindness to yellow blankie. <laughs> First, I said to him, that yellow blanket doesn't have a consciousness. This did not impress him. <laughs> then I said, we'd send loving kindness to yellow blankie, figuring that all beings could include his fabric friend if my son so chose. However, when we began the loving kindness practice, it went like this. I said, I send loving kindness to dad and mom. My son said, and yellow blankie. And I said, okay, and yellow blankie. <laughs> As my eldest son matured and his emotional understanding was expanded, I gently expanded the meditation. Compassion is an extension of love. Further along this trajectory of going beyond ourselves to embrace others. And to the eldest, may having been instructed after sending loving kindness to all beings, he may let himself feel the suffering of others to let his heart resonate with the pain of others. This was done in a gentle and non-dogmatic way. There is a sense of respect and maturity that he may have felt, albeit subtle, subtly, for being able to grow in his practice in this way. Now, I can't say for certain, but it is my hope that this compassion will grow within my son's as they reach deeper into the rich and complex social world of young adulthood, and thus act as a counterbalance to the arrogance and the judgment that comes with the territory of adulthood. I particularly hope that they can develop a true compassion for those less fortunate than themselves, people without enough to eat, without adequate clothing or housing, people who are in war zones and are stricken by disease. In our privileged society, where many of us don't see the outer reaches of human suffering, I want actively to instill the capacity of compassion. The compassion itself will grow with their experience. I try to do this without too much attachment to the results or to the process itself. If my children decide they don't want to do this anymore, I hope I can let go of it lightly. But for now, as for the past 16 years, they value their practice of loving kindness. Gregory lives with his wife and three sons up in Portland, Oregon, which is a mountain area. It's to the west of where Missouri is in the north, above us near the north, West Corners in Washington, the state below it is Oregon. You can find it on the map. 
And he is an insight meditation teacher, predominantly working with Vipassana practice with different Asian teachers. And he has a really good background. And he was uh, the president of the Metta Foundation. And this is the background for him, which is really excellent. So in looking at this, where I think it's a beautiful example of teaching loving kindness to children. When I was on the West Coast with Auntie doing visiting several temples and meeting with families and everything. He gave me a turn to work with children and gave me instructions when I was up in um, Washington state uh, in the Seattle and Tacoma area. And then he gave me instructions again when we were down in the Los Angeles area. And the, the advice that he gave at the time is spot on with Gregory Kramer's picture of teaching loving kindness for children. The one place the parents can get in trouble teaching the, the, the practice to children is if they demand that this start happening. It has to be a, something that it comes together as a family project, but they have to want to do it. And I really liked the flexibility in his explanation, the flexibility of who we're going to send loving kindness to and such like that, because I think one of the uh, biggest misunderstandings we have right now is that this is for something for a group to do at the temple and again once again we're trying to show you that this is something that we want to have come into life and make a difference in children make a difference for parenting so let me know how did you feel about this did you like this presentation Anybody like it? <laughs> Did you like it? I think it was uh, really very important. But you know that uh, as parents and even as grandparents, we should be able to inculcate this meta uh, in our children or grandchildren. And anyone actually, you know, all, all children. And if we catch them young, then it's um, it becomes a habit for them. You know, yeah. it's like saying a prayer. It's like, like saying a prayer before eating uh, your lunch or dinner. It's something like that. And um, and metta is, I, I believe it's a very powerful uh, practice. Mm -hmm. So if oh. we can, it will be a it will be a gift to the children if we can, um, you know, get them into the habit. Because ultimately, it's about the habit. So it's it's wonderful what he did with good that he shared it. You know, Greg, we shared it with uh, the world, and he shared it with us today. So thank you. The only only one thing I was wondering is that uh, the practice is that took one hour every no. night. No, no, no. This what oh. we just did right now. That practice itself. Oh. That's all there is. Okay. That wasn't okay. even more. That okay. was about maybe ten minutes. Not maybe ten. Yes, minutes. because the attention span of children is not that long. You know? No, 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 no. The booklet, the booklet is showing you all the advice about it. But all, all, um, all that really, all that um, he was talking about that you do. Oh, did I lose? Oh, here we go. Um, just this part here. This is the this is what he's talking about is what they do each night together. This part here. This is the whole thing. It's written out and it's very it's very simple. Your loving kindness here and you're doing it to yourself. And then the next place you're doing it is to mom and dad. And this is one thing that Bonte was stressing to me that they do it to their family. So Gregory picked up on this very, very well, exactly the way we're thinking about the most value is to do it as a family unit, you know? So you start with mom and dad, and this is the mom and dad section, and then to both his brothers or brothers and sisters, if you wanna do that. If you wanna go to aunts and uncles, you can do that too. And um, then loving kindness to the teachers after that, okay? And after you go through the loving teachers, then you send to all people. And then you go through these little, little sections. And you basically, they're set up the same way. They're slightly different wording, but you just have a big piece of paper and you go down till you know it by heart. Okay. And all the people everywhere on the earth. 
And then you go to the universe and you, you send it right out in the universe and kids really like to do that, you know? And I, we do have one student in um, Minnesota, okay? And he, he's done this with his son since he was born. And they did it before he goes to bed. This is what they do. And it's the same setup as Gregory's household. It really is an echo of what Drew is doing with, was doing with his son, okay? And his son developed this thing because his father always sat before he went to bed at night and the baby was born, the baby was on his lap and then the baby was sleeping in his lap and he had a meditation room he set up. And if the children are moving around, you just sit there and meditate. And the little boy, if he didn't want to meditate, would come over, put his head on his dad's lap while he was meditating and go to sleep. But he had a little bookcase in that room where it had a little altar. And the bookcase had a mat and a pillow to sit on for him. And his son got a mat and a small pillow to sit on. So he had his own mat and his own pillow. This was a big deal from the beginning. And if you do this in this way, you know, you have this built up and these boys got older and he was doing it before bedtime instead of saying prayers, uh, just to set of prayers at night they were doing it through a, a, a system of med meditation with, med um, you know, with you. Yeah. You see, so then after you do the universe, then you have all kinds in all directions of beings. That was like what I read you in the beginning that the monks had the blessing for those without feet and those with two feet, those with four feet. And, um, this little blessing that we used to say in the forest because we didn't want anybody to crawl in our bed and bite our toe. <laughs> and nobody ever did. <laughs> nobody ever did. And then at the end, you open your heart to all the creatures um, and um, let them know that you love them in your heart and the benefits of the meditation. And then you just put, put it through all beings one more time and that's the end. So the only thing that's in here, I mean, I can copy this off and put it in a Word document for you as the actual plan, if you were to say it each night, is only going to take like about maybe 10 minutes together. If you take your take, shall we do it to this people? Shall we do it? Who shall we do it to? You see? And you make it a game. It's just taking the place of nighttime prayers sort of things in the Christian system. It's very, very similar to ask for this for other people and everything. So I just, I really thought this was great. I was going through these um, several pamphlets that were in the collection from Budanet. And um, I was really enjoying them, you know, <laughs> you know, and this was so short, I was shocked. It was only 12 pages and it's written in a good font. It's written like in a 14 font, you know? So, yeah. So what did anybody else, how about you, Sharma? What did you think? Did you, would you, I mean, would you use it? You would use it, right? I mean, Perel, you would use it to give it to somebody to use. It's just totally... Yes. Universal. Um, it's a universal um, piece, you know. Mataji. Yeah. My earlier question, questioner has answered like a grandmother. Grandmother means we don't have any expectation of the children. <laughs> when expectation is there, such people have to respond to your uh, talk today. Uh -huh. Such parents. <laughs> Parents will have a lot of expectations on the children. As a grandfather or a grandmother, we have a lot of compassion towards grandchildren. We don't have any expectation. But, but you people, can, yeah, but you can share with them your knowledge. Uh, and We can you, share. We can yeah, share. It is okay. Share and, you know, it's, you don't have any expectations for them the way parents have a kind of pushing aspect today, I think, with children. But as a parent, uh, I, I did a lot <laughs> pushing and other things. <laughs> and as, as, a, as a grandparent, it can go easy. Yeah, I understand exactly what you mean. Yeah. And the two in India, these things, attachments are very much there. The grandchildren, grand people, uh, and a uh, lot of compassion will automatically will come because we don't have any expectation from them. And uh, even a daughter or a son scores them immediately will come into the picture and uh, stop them, the grandchildren. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So that is why they come to us for uh, petting. <laughs> they want to have fun with you. That's a good uh -huh. thing. 
it's a good a thing. thing. But yeah. the answer has to come from come from a real parent. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. It's a Thank good you, thing. Mom. That's good. Very nice. How about you, Sarah? What do you think? Do you like it? Yes, it's okay. Correct. Okay. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, I can't uh, hear it. Did I, you like that? Yeah, did yes, you like yeah. it? I'm, I'm actually just uh, looking up on BuddhaNet, uh, uh, Jeffrey Kramer's uh, words there, because I think they're very, very useful and, uh, and very helpful. And, and also, I mean, uh, okay, yes, this is, this is useful for children, but actually we all can benefit from this uh, um, uh, simple and heartfelt approach. Uh, oh sure, you can use yeah. the pattern for adults as well with this. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Abs he was not, he was designing it in in a capsule for uh, families because there's mm. so many questions. You know, the one thing that happens in the Buddhist structure, as an old Christian, again point, you know, is if a person leaves the Buddhist structure, I wonder why do they leave the Buddhist structure? Why don't they come back? What's going on? And in this busy world, whenever I find a couple who decides to leave, it's not that whether they have children or not, it doesn't matter. Why did they leave? What caused this? And the, the difference is probably that the uh, some of the Christian groups caught them because they provided support groups for the men, support groups for the women, homemaking classes for the women, children's, more children's activities, which is not common except in the very big Buddhist centers Sometimes you will find all of that, but not usually in the Buddhist system. It's very different. And so um, I was trying, I was talking one time to some monks about this and saying, well, if people have left and people were leaving this one temple, he's like, I don't know why they're leaving. And so I went and asked the wife and the husband, but the wife I could get information out of. <laughs> the wife would tell, my husband needed this. We didn't have money for counseling and, uh, you know, uh, for an analyst or anything. He needed help. And there were no such things. But when we turn around, this is the one thing that the Christians do have. They're very organized in the Catholic system, Baptist system, Methodist system, Lutheran systems. You know, they're very organized with that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I wish that they monks uh, could see this and just take it upon themselves to try. They're not exposed. The monks are not exposed. If you are dealing with, say, seven monks in a temple and they've never seen a movie in their life. OK, and you see, they've never been exposed to working with a boss or under the pressure of a corporate structure or in the life where you are as the lay person today, they haven't tasted the stress and the pressing. They can teach you about it. Mm -hmm. But if they started at seven or eight years old and I taught for a little while, only for a month, I had an opportunity to teach in a Samanera uh, school. And the youngest one, this is crazy, he was officially, unofficially, officially there. Okay, he was unofficially, officially there by his parents because they, they let the eight-year-old go. He really wanted to go. And he moved up there and went into the school. But the six-year-old really missed him so bad that the mother decided, if you want to go up, then he can go up. And then he was getting educated because they had a little school system and everything. And they take them all the way through. Uh, you know, they're under the lower grades at the temple. And then they put them in if they want to. Uh, for the high school or they have it set up where they're teaching them longer up to a certain level of like higher up, you know, to um, an eighth level and nine, 10, 11, 12, maybe they can go to the system itself. But wow, I mean, I, I met a monk once who was a, totally an adult and had never seen a movie. Mm. I took him to see Fantasia. I wanted him to understand what the film industry could do that was really beautiful. So I took him to, uh, uh, they had just re reconstituted the Fantasia, the Disney movie that was so famous. And we went to see that. It was amazing, beautiful film, beautiful film. But how can you get them to think in terms of this when 
they are somewhat locked into a system of uh, seniority and so tightly that that they're they ha they actually are so obedient to the discipline system. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm saying I think we need to look very carefully at the needs of the lay community and the needs just, of. Excuse me a moment. I just need to go to the front door. I've got someone there. Okay. <laughs> okay. But as far as loving kindness is concerned, this is one of the most beautiful things that I've seen put together. And I hope that you um, you liked it. And this is uh, actually one hour. <laughs> you see you're actually 45 or 50 minutes, yeah. So we, we should have pat ourselves on the back. <laughs> we actually got something out here in 50 minutes. <laughs> Good girl, okay. <laughs> Because I think we started at uh, 6.45. Did you say 6.45? <laughs> Look at that. Okay, so if you have a few more minutes, if you want to talk about a question, does anybody have any questions about anything? You can throw one in. Well, I, I was just going to mention, um, the, you were talking about that uh, under a, a sort of traditional Buddhist structure there there isn't all these areas of help and this is one one ex wonderful example and i would also uh you mentioned some time ago and uh meant and sent through um some of the the work you've done on the never mind and i think this is really valuable for for adults in working life and in in, in dealing with the yeah the the challenges of, of domestic life and we're, uh, we're still struggling with trying to get the nevermind book finished it's really caught well, now, now it's caught with the artwork <laughs> so that that to me uh, is is another part of that jigsaw if you like of, of support that's that's potentially available the nevermind idea if anybody wonders what he's talking about you know i was teaching somebody in one time they had this expression of forgot. And I, this was a teenage expression. And it, I caught up with it with some students who just wanted to say, oh yeah, let it be, let it go, let it go. And then I started, I started investigating thinking, you know, every single language you can come up with, it has an expression in it uh, for Never minding, just never mind. Don't and and it's perfect for what we're teaching you when we say recognize. Well, the moment you second you recognize, you never mind. And never mind is a trigger to let go. That's what this is about. So I've been going in the direction because I'm not really I'm not changing the six R's. I'm just saying instead of saying recognize, release, because some people don't like these R's and the R's are conditionally hooked into English, okay? And you go to another language, there are no R's. So the idea was to grab something that would work for this. And what happened was I taught some teenager classes, you know, uh, teenage classes in Sunday school and they liked it right away. They really did. And we put it together and then it didn't get printed and it got carried around for a long time but it's a perfect game to play. Never mind. Let it means let go. So it's you catch what's coming up and starting a little bit of pressure. You go ah, never mind. Ah, oh, c'est la vie. Ah, oh, uh, no es import. No es import is the Italian or something. There's one for every language. And the front of the book it shows you fifteen or eighteen languages that have these little expressions of just let go. Here marati the, the marati means let it be. And I always tease about Shashi training. <laughs> and we start laughing because if you're around him and he's the driver and drives me around and helps to support me, wherever we go, whatever we do, if anything happens, oh, let it be. Let it be automatically it's just let it be relax go on and he has it down so completely naturally here that when he hears me explain the meditation he goes let it be class let it be class again yep let it be and he's got it naturally yeah so uh, anybody can grab a hold of this and just say never mind it's the never mind world <laughs> and stay in the, it means to him to stay on what you're doing. I was teaching his son last week 
and he's getting ready for a big exam and some things were bothering him a little bit, you know, as he was studying. And I said, then he started doing this thing of never mind, just let it be. So let it be, relax, smile, come back. And it's like a little dance, let it go, relax, smile, come back. The other day I was reading in one of our groups and someone brought in was teaching some people how to do the six R's. And actually I want to tell you something, there's only five, <laughs> there's five action pieces. And the reminder, the reminder to is down here, the reminder and repeat this and repeat this, you see, and repeat it. There's actually five. We never actually picked up on that. It's actually five. And you please repeat the five over and over and over again. So never mind. Let go, relax, smile, come back. See? And they picked it up right away, you know, picked it up and used it in prepare, preparation for this exam. And everybody I have tried it with grabs a hold of it right away. So we made a game out of it. And in the back of this little book, there's going to be a little card. And I think there'll be a few cards in the back and they're, they're scorecards. You take them out and, you know, there's a picture of it on the page and we give you a few to start out with. You're supposed to basically be telling us how many times on the scorecard you get a point for each one of these and you keep the scorecard for a week and then tally up your points. It's a personal best game, personal best game. You're not playing against anybody. You're just trying to judge for yourself what is your progress and you're trying to keep track of how many times when something came up today did i just let it go and relax and i'll come back or how many times and how many times did i have to um you know it started to grab me and i started to you know, squeeze it, but then I let it go. And it did in graduation, there's five graduate levels here of this. And how many times did I just smile and let it be, you know? And then at the end is one about how many times did I give away my smile today? That's an important one because smiling is great. But how many times did you get to give it away? Whether you give it away to the dog, the horse or the person, I don't care, but are you giving away your smile? You have to be giving it away to make it worth more, okay? And so then you add up these little points you, each day, you sit down finally on Friday and you run your little tally across for each day and then add it up. And you ended up with so many points that week and see what you do next week. Let's see, did you, did you let go? Uh, did it let go right away? Or did you let go as it was, your mind was moving away from what you were doing? Or did you have to really think about it? I think that's kind of how it goes. And then did you smile? And then did you give your smiles away? There's five, five pieces here for points. <laughs> so yeah, never mind. And we thought it was so cute. Uh, the teenagers in this one group, they said to me, why aren't we making this into a dance? I said, I don't know. Go ahead, make it into a dance. It's never mind. Let go, relax, smile, come back. Let go, relax, smile, come back. See, and they're just, you can take off with this and do anything you want. Play with it and, and start smiling and sharing your smiles. That's a big message here. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, is everybody happy? Yeah? So how about if we, we have any other questions? Anybody? Happy, happy. Ah, good. Sarm is happy. Okay, let's say our prayer. Okay. May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving may. shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May, may all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May, may beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas Deva. of mighty power, share this merit of ours. May they long may protect they. the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.